Hi, and welcome along to this eighth video in our Container Security Fundamentals series. In the last video, we took a look at Linux capabilities and how limiting the capabilities available to a container can help improve its security. In this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on and start looking at C groups and how they can be used in container security and in general Linux security. So first, to introduce C groups, they are essentially a means of limiting the resources that are available to a process or to a container. You can limit things like CPU, memory, and other different resources available on the host. You can also use them to limit access to devices. Now, when we're using containers, obviously we have a shared host. So limiting access to things like CPU is very important because otherwise we risk having what's known as a noisy neighbor container, and that can essentially use all of the resources on the host creating a denial of service and ruining the running of the rest of our containers. So anyway, let's dive in and have a little look at how we can use C groups with tools like Docker to actually limit those resources and stop those noisy neighbors causing problems. So what we're gonna do here is we have again our standard Linux host running Docker. And what we'll do is we are going to start a Docker container running a program called Stress. Now what Stress does essentially is a stress testing tool and it will try and use a set of resources available depending on the parameters you pass it. In this case, we've passed it the minus C2 parameter, which means use two full CPU cores. So usually this would try and use full, two full CPU cores if we ran it. However, we've also added a flag to Docker here, which is minus minus CPUs 0.5. So we've said to Docker that this container, no matter how much resources it asked for, should only be given half a CPU core but that's the 0.5. So if we hit enter, uh, stress will start up and we can see it's trying to use two full CPU cores. So let's look in another terminal and see what's actually happened. If we do top table of processes, we can see what's going on on the machine. And here at the top, we can see our two stress processes. And we can see that each of these is using about 25% of a CPU core. So half a CPU core in total. This is exactly what we told Docker to do and a good example of how C groups work. That C groups essentially doing that limiting and stopping it from using all of the resources that it requested. So that's one way you can use uh, um, you can use C groups. Let's just stop that container so it doesn't keep trying to use a lot of our CPU. Um, and then what we can do is talk about another way in which you can use C groups to actually limit resources. So another resource that C groups manage is process ID IDs, PIDs. Linux has a limit to how many PIDs it can have on a given machine. And if you exceed that limit, you will essentially denial of service the host. This means that you have this thing in Linux called a fork bomb. A fork bomb is a classic attack where attackers would essentially use all of the process IDs in a container or a process and actually make the host essentially crash. What's interesting to note is as in common with the CPU limitations, there's no default limit on this imposed by container systems. So if you want to limit the number of process IDs taken, you do actually have to specify that. In Docker, what we can do is we can do this by passing a parameter, just as we did with the CPU limitation. So what we're going to do here is we're going to run uh, this Docker command. And you can see here, we have the minus minus PIDs limit parameter set to 10. That means this container can only have 10 process IDs and it's C groups that are doing the work underneath the covers here. Once we've got that running, we can run this rather obscure looking command. And this essentially is a classic fork bomb. This rather obscure looking command will try and launch as many process IDs as it can, essentially chewing up all the resources on the host. However, what happens is very quickly we get a resource temporarily unavailable. And that means it's hit its PIDs limit. So it hasn't DOSed the host, the host is still quite responsive. If we look in our other terminal, we can see the host is just fine. There's nothing going wrong there at all. So that is essentially it doing its job. Um, this has been a kind of quick look at some of the ways in which you can use C groups. There are others. And if you'd like more details on that, please do read the blogs on our Security Lab site, which cover this. And that blog is linked in the description below this video. In our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to mandatory access control systems like AppArmor and SE Linux, which provide another layer of security and isolation that can be applied to processes and containers. I look forward to seeing you in that next video.